That $1.6 billion that go to put somebody in jail, all of that money come from all of us. So if you can understand that, why can't you understand that you're responsible for helping to pay to educate all of our children? Pat, <laughs> where did this nonsense come from? I mean, it's alarming to hear that we got folks in our state who, whose position is, I don't want my tax dollars going to East St. Louis to educate a child down there when that same person tax dollars is going to go to put that person in prison if they do something wrong. Right, but people, of course, don't vote, uh, don't have the opportunity to go to the polls and vote on whether or not to build a new prison, whether or not the state will spend more money on prisons. People do have the opportunity, registered voters, of course, do have the opportunity to go to the polls and vote on whether or not to raise their school taxes. Yes. So we don't, have, we don't have referendums on whether or not to raise federal taxes. We don't have referendums on whether or not to raise sales taxes. We have referendums on whether or not to raise school taxes. So as has been noted many times, it's the one tax in which a citizen, a regular Joe, can say yes mm -hmm. or no to the tax. And you mentioned you were talking about uh, corporate challenges to property taxes. House Bill 750, I believe, uh, would be helpful to business, should be attractive to business, because the property tax relief, the 20% property tax relief on the education part of a property tax bill, which House Bill 750 would enable, applies to business, too. And as Ralph Martire, who wrote the bill, along with Reverend Senator Ralph uh, James Meeks, has pointed out, it's good for business to have a reduction in a fixed cost, yes. such as property tax. Yes, you're right. A business has to pay property taxes whether it has had a profitable year or an unprofitable year. So by getting a 20% rebate on the education portion of its property taxes, a corporation has more money to use for training of workers, research and development, things like that. So, and also, as we noted earlier, House Bill 750, by increasing the amount that the state spends on each individual student, will enable school districts like my own to turn out better educated students. In my case, Joliet Township High School, every student will be graduating knowing algebra. Mm -hmm. That makes Illinois more competitive yes. in the global marketplace. You're right. L let me say something else about great schools. Great schools on a great schools depends on a highly qualified, well educated staff. Also, expenses such as insurance and pensions are particularly affected by inflation. If schools were funded by state income taxes, they could keep up with the rate of inflation. More important, income taxes are a fair tax. People who earn more money pay more in taxes, while people earning less money pay less taxes. I mean, it don't get no simple. The more you make, the more you're responsible to give. That's true, of course, with federal income tax, but not with state income tax. The state income tax is regressive. You pay the same, same amount of your income in state income tax, whether you're making 40000 a year or 400000 a year. House Bill 750 addresses that, too. House Bill 750 would, um, under House Bill 750, the bottom 60 percent, so the majority of all income tax uh, payers in the state of Illinois, would realize no tax increase. And the bottom 20 percent of earners would actually see their taxes go down. And that's because the bill contains a provision for a $900 million income tax credit. Because if, if the... Repeat that. Okay. If the, I like, and I, I like I'm an English teacher. I'm not a math teacher. If, if, if House Bill, <laughs> seven, if House bill 750 notes. becomes law, the individual income tax rate will increase from 3% to 5%, and the corporate rate will increase proportionally. That's required by the Constitution. Okay, so if the bill becomes law, Every earner in Illinois will pay 5% of property tax, a 5% income tax. But we want the bite to be smaller for people who earn less, right? So sure. that it's progressive, so that it's fair. It's fair. The way that's accomplished is through a $900 million 
income tax credit, which um, it's not just fair, it also makes hard-headed economic sense yes. because people of limited means spend their money. Mm -hmm. They don't they have do. enough to put in the bank. So this will be an in economic stimulus to local economies. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I mean, what more common sense do House Bill 750 make? You can't get no simpler than that. I want to see everybody in our state get a tax cut when it comes to property taxes. Because most folks can't afford three, four, five thousand dollars tax bills just on their property bill, property taxes. House Bill 750 is in the best interest of your child and you. Superintendent. I'd like to appeal to the audience in a different way. And, you know, we, we keep hearing about separation of church and state, but I am who I am. <laughs> That's erroneous. And I know who I serve. <laughs> yes. And th there, somewhere I read that when you do this to the least of them, you've also done <laughs> it unto me. Unto me. If we don't take care of our children, yes. then who? And if not now, when? Right. And I'd like to appeal that to the audience. Uh, our children are our most precious commodity. Yes. And every generation has always had the premise of, I want the next generation to be better than the previous yes. generation. We're retrogressing because we cannot afford to allow what our children need to compete in this global society, a global economy, if we don't step up to the plate and give them what they need to, f to fund schools and educate them the way they need to be educated, they will not be able to compete with China. They will not be able to compete with the East Eastern European world, they will not be able to compete in many of the, with the students from other states, let alone going to other countries. We have to take the bull by the horn and say this is what we need to do. So I appeal to you again by saying contact your congressmen, contact your senators, and make sure that they understand that you are supporting and you want them to support House Bill 750. Okay. Legislators care about children, we know. Perhaps they don't know how to make the state solvent. Perhaps they're stuck trying to find a way to lift Illinois out of its current bankruptcy, the structural deficit of $2 billion. House Bill 750 gives them a way to do that, to close the structural deficit, to make the Illinois tax system fairer, and to properly fund our schools so every student has, has a fair chance. Legislators, however, have been taught, perhaps incorrectly, that, that voting for a tax increase is political suicide. Mm -hmm. So legislators need to hear from people that voting for higher, fairer taxes and increased school funding in Illinois is not political suicide, but it's an act of courage that will be rewarded at the ballot box. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the problem, um, as I was at the 13th Conference, and state rep Kelly brought it out. What we need to understand is that there are some Republicans, some Democrats, there are in what we call 50-50 districts. Any little movement can make them lose a seat. And what we want those Republicans and Democrats to understand is that your number one obligation is to our children to our children. And if it costs you that seat because you stood up for the children, then I say that's the position you must take. Because you didn't get sent to Springfield to play Patsy. You got sent to Springfield to take care of the people's business. Educating our children 
and funding education the way it should be, because that's what the Constitution said, you guys are responsible for 51% of the funds coming back to all of our school districts. That's why we sent you to Springfield. But I do understand politics plays a factor 